I run a small apartment building. One of my tenants has done something awful. Working for a residential property management firm is about as glamorous as it sounds. It's a decent living, but most of the tenants can drive you batshit crazy especially at Martin Place. About half pay their rent late if they pay it at all. Eviction court takes up most of my time. Whenever I'm not booting out a squatter, I'm doing small repairs in the apartments. No one else in the office would take the place, so I got stuck with it. I can honestly say I never had a tenant I liked there. Except for Doug Albertson. He was decent. In the beginning, anyway. In the end, he was the most abominable person I'd ever met. Doug moved into apartment 6. Normal seeming fella. Mid 40s, no kids, work from home job. Behavior modification, he said. I meet with people over video chat to help them break their bad habits. Smoking, cursing, nail binding. You name it and I can put a stop to it. He had his groceries delivered and only took his trash out at night. Nice but reclusive. The guy never called for any kind of maintenance. Most communication I had with home was the day I showed him the place. You'd see him now and again in the hall, but that was it. The rest of the building was chaos. Non-stop parties, drunks stumbling down the hallway, and druggies passed out on the stairs. Most of those miscreants were guests of Toby Hansen in apartment 7. He raised hell all day. I was walking down the stairs on a cold afternoon when I had one of my rare Doug sightings. He was walking up the steps with his mail. We waved to each other and mumbled hellos as we passed by. Excuse me, Doug called out from the top of the stairs. May I speak with you for a moment? Sure, I replied. Want a need, Doug? He smiled uncomfortably and kicked his toe on the ground. You could tell he was uncomfortable. I looked at my watch to give him the silent hurry the hell up signal so he'd move things along. The gentleman in apartment 7 keeps late hours, he said politely. Very noisy. Do you think you could talk to him for me? Sorry, Doug, I responded. I've talked to Toby Hansen about a dozen times telling him to keep that racket down. Son of a bitch ignores me. Can't evict him for being a turd. The kid pays his rent. Your best bet is to call the cops with a noise complaint. If the boy gets enough fines, maybe he'll shut up. I would rather avoid involving the police, he said dryly. Perhaps I can help him modify his behavior. Thank you for your help. We said goodbye and went about our business. That was the last complaint I ever received about Toby Hansen. Suddenly he became a model tenant. His rent was always in the Dropbox on time. I figured he must have gotten a job because he was never home when I was in the building. All of his no-good friends vanished. The parties came to an end. It didn't fix the other ten piss-poor tenants, but it went a long way toward quieting the place down. Over the next few months oddly enough, the apartment building started quieting down a great deal. The couple in apartment 3 stopped their round-the-clock bickering and yelling sessions. For as long as I could remember, you'd always heard them shouting at each other any time you were in the building. Shattering plates, throwing clothes out the window, and arguments in the hallway. One day, they were just quiet. I'd get a maintenance request every other month or so from them which I'd take care of while they were at work. Otherwise, not a peep. I popped by the building on the second of the month to check the rent drop box and was surprised to see Doug again. He lived on the second floor, but I could swear he was coming out of apartment 5. Joe Kimbler's place. He was a violent alcoholic with an impressive rap sheet. Didn't seem like Doug's kind of company. But who's to judge? Manrin Doug I shouted and tossed my hand in the air in his direction. The building was as quiet as a tomb. A welcome if not unusual change. This may be the most peaceful I've ever heard this place. Doug smiled and waved in return. It's all about behavior modification, sir, he replied as he started up the steps. Your suggestion worked. I spoke with Mr. Hansen as well as the other residents. It seems my skills were able to help them work through some of their issues. Have a good day. You too, Doug, I shouted back to him. He vanished into his apartment. My job had become manageable. Enjoyable even. That was until August of this year when half of the rent checks from the building bounced. I called the tenants multiple times but not a single one of them answered. Probably left three dozen voicemails. Hell, a hundred text messages. Emails, not that anyone checks the damn things anymore. No answer. I was shocked to see Doug's name on the list of bounced checks. 
After a few days and no return calls, I headed over to the building and started knocking on doors. No one on the first floor answered. They weren't a likely bunch to maintain regular employment so I figured a few of them were dodging me. I headed up the stairs and knocked on Doug's door. No answer. I hammered harder calling his name, but still no response. Just as I was turning to walk down the stairs into the car, I heard a muffled noise inside. I called his name a few times but no answer. Just those muffled cries. My head swam with fear. Reaching into my pocket, I pulled out my keyring and slid the master key into the lock. As I pushed the door inward, an overwhelming smell washed over me. Ammonia and rotting food, maybe. Smelled like a damn kennel. Doug? I shouted. You here? You okay? No answer other than a muffled noise coming from his bedroom. Concerned he may be hurt, I headed for the door and opened it. The stench intensified so badly that my eyes began to water. Suddenly the room was filled with a chorus of muffled moans and sobs. Along the walls of the bedroom were dog cages. Inside each one was one of the building tenants. Their ankles and wrists were tethered together, dirty rags in their mouths, and shock collars around their necks. On a table in the center of the room sat a single sheet of paper. I picked it up and read the brief script. I apologize for the bad check, sir. Some things cannot be avoided. I won't be returning, but as a thank you for the wonderful accommodations, I have completed my behavior modification sessions with your tenants. They shall trouble you no longer. Yours respectfully, Doug Albertson.